Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at the latest video transmitter from Holy Land, the Cosmo C1. We will go through some of the most important features, talk about who this transmitter is for, and I will share with you some of my test results as well, including something that may be a little bit surprising. And before we start, just the usual disclaimer. Holyland sent me a Cosmo C1 sample for this review, but as usual, this is a completely independent review, and you will hear me talk about the pros and cons of this transmitter. If you are a regular viewer on this channel, you will remember I have reviewed some of Holyland's video transmitters before, but those are all from their Mars series, which are the more budget-friendly transmitters. The Cosmo C1 we are reviewing today is from their Cosmo series, which is designed for professional users. Having said that, I know a lot of professional videographers and photographers are using their Mars series transmitters as they are really good enough for a lot of different usages. But anyway, the Cosmo C1 comes in a Pelican style carry case and there is one transmitter and one receiver in it, and then quite a few different accessories as well. Everything fits inside this case very nicely, so it is an easy and safe way to carry and store the Cosmo C1. The transmitter and the receiver, they both has a really solid metal construction, and they share the same design as well. In some of my previous Holy Land reviews, I mentioned I don't really like having the same design for the transmitter and the receiver because when I'm in a hurry, like I'm setting up at an event or shooting a wedding, I could easily mix up the transmitter and the receiver and that means I actually have to spend more time to swap the transmitter and receiver back. But at least with this Cosmo C1, there is a red and blue label to tell you which one is the transmitter and which one is the receiver. The red is the transmitter and the blue is the receiver. So I'm okay with that. The Cosmo C1 can transmit video up to 1080p 60 frames per second using H.265 codec, which is a more efficient codec than the H.264 or other older codec. The video signal is transmitted at 5.1 to 5.8 GHz frequency and the device would automatically switch the frequency when needed to get the least amount of interference. This auto frequency switching or hopping feature is a unique feature for the Cosmo C1 that the Mars series transmitters don't have. Holyland claims the transmission range is up to 1,000 feet or about 300 meters when there is a direct line of sight and I will show you my test results very soon. Setting up the Cosmo C1 is really quite easy. Each C1 comes with two mounting accessories. One is like a small magic arm that you can screw onto the bottom of either the transmitter or the receiver. And then there is a bracket for you to mount the device horizontally. To be honest, I wish it comes with two set of magic arms and horizontal mounting bracket as user may prefer to just use the magic arms or just use the horizontal mounting brackets on both the transmitter and the receiver. The next thing you should do is to attach the antenna. The Cosmo C1 comes with two different types of antennas. The normal antenna like this one, which is bendable, and there's also an extra pair of mushroom type antenna. The mushroom type antenna has slightly higher gain and that's what you should use if the transmitter is not at the same height as the receiver. Then you connect the video cable. The transmitter can take either HDMI or SDI input and the receiver has one HDMI and two SDI output. On the transmitter, there's also a SDI loop out so you can connect to an external monitor or other device directly to the transmitter as well. And the last thing you need to do is power the transmitter and the receiver. There are three different ways to power these devices. You can use the Sony MPF style battery like most other transmitters. If you are a videographer, you surely would have a few of these batteries in your camera bag. 
both the transmitter and receiver can also be powered by USB. Definitely a very convenient option for both indoor or outdoor usage. The Cosmo C1 also comes with one DC power adapter which you can use with either your transmitter or receiver for a more permanent setup. Yes, I said either because there is only one DC power adapter that comes with each set of Cosmo C1. In my studio here, I just have the receiver permanently powered by the DC power adapter and the transmitter is usually either powered by a Sony NPF battery and sometimes I power it by USB if the camera is close to one of my USB power supply. So once everything is connected, you can now power on the transmitter and the receiver. The transmitter and the receiver should just pair themselves automatically and after 15 seconds or so, you can see the video from the receiver's output. So 15 seconds is pretty fast. I compared it with the Holyland Mars 400S Pro. The 400S Pro need about 25 seconds. So the Cosmo C1 is about 10 seconds faster. There is a small OLED screen on the side. It is very similar to the screen on the Mars 300 Pro and it's not a really big one. The menus are pretty basic but also very easy to see and navigate. One little weird thing I noticed is even though the screen is a tall portrait shape and the dial is also a vertical one, but when you are changing settings, the direction arrows on the display are pointing left and right instead of top and bottom. Both the transmitter and the receiver has a cooling fan at the back and the fan does not seem to be too noisy. You can hear the fan when you are filming in a really quiet indoor place but as long as your microphone isn't right next to it, it shouldn't really affect your audio. I did a test here in this room a few days ago. Right now it's summer here in New Zealand and the ambient temperature was around 25 degrees Celsius that day when I was doing the testing. After running the Cosmo C1 for about 30 minutes, the surface temperature of the Cosmo C1 raised from around 29 degrees to 43 degrees Celsius. So it was a bit warm, but I can still hold it comfortably with my hands and I left it running for another 30 minutes and the temperature of the device didn't really change much. If you compare it with the Holyland Mars series transmitters, the Cosmo C1 has many advantages and also additional features. However, one feature that the Cosmo C1 is missing is the smart device app support. Unlike the Mars 400, 300 or even X, which you can use a smart device and the Hollyview app as another viewer, the Cosmo C1 doesn't support it and you are limited to the HDMI and two SDI output on the receiver. I'm not really sure if there is a technical limitation or it's more a marketing reason, but I do really hope Hollyland would also add the Hollyview support to the Cosmo C1 as I find the Hollyview app really useful for some situations. Over the last month, I have been using the Cosmo C1 almost every day and it works really well, very good image quality and I almost never have any transmission issues. But then most of the time, the transmitter and the receiver were within 20 to 30 meters at the maximum and Holyland claims the maximum working range is 1000 feet, which is about 300 meter when there is direct line of sight. So I did a few tests to find out what is the maximum working range like in real life. So for the first test I did, I set up a camera and connect to the Cosmo C1 transmitter in this room here. Then I connect the receiver to a small monitor and then I walk outside and I left my room and walk along the main street just outside. I actually didn't walk too far away because at about 70 meter or so, the transmission just completely stopped it. Now, when I was kind of expecting or hoping that I can get a little bit longer range than 70 meter, but to be fair, there were at least two houses in between the transmitter and the receiver when it stopped working at 70 meter range. So I think it was kind of expected the signal can't really go through all the houses and walls in between. Then I did a second test. I went to a park which has a large open area. This is the place that I usually do my outdoor range test. 
So I did pretty much the same thing. I have the camera connected to the transmitter and then the receiver connected to a small monitor and I start walk away from the camera. The only difference is this time it is an open space so I could walk a 200 meter straight line with nothing in between the transmitter and the receiver. And yes, I could walk all the way 200 meter and I still have perfect video transmission. So after I walk 200 meters and I can't really go any further, instead of directly walk back towards the camera, I turned left and took a slightly longer route to walk back to the camera. Now while the maximum distance when I was walking back was still around 200 meter or so, but now I didn't have direct line of sight anymore and there were lots of trees, animals between the transmitter and the receiver. I have no transmission issue and the picture quality was great. So that is really good. It means I can get at least 200 meter or 650 feet working range even if there is a bit of obstacles between the transmitter and the receiver. Polyland claims the latency of the Cosmos C1 is as low as 40 milliseconds, which is very low. It means if you are shooting at 25 frames per second, the received video is delayed by just one frame compared to the original signal sent by the transmitter. But this is the factory cramped figure and if you are a regular viewer on this channel, you know quite often I would like to do a test to compare the real world figure with the cramped figures. Testing wireless transmitters latency is a little bit of a challenge sometimes because usually the camera or the device HDMI output already has some latency. So if you see some latency with a wireless video setup, part of the latency could come from the camera itself. So because of that, this is how I test the latency. First, I connect my external monitor directly to my computer's external monitor HDMI output using a HDMI cable. And I mirror the laptop's display to my external monitor. So both screens should display identical image if there is no latency. I film the two monitors at the same time. Then I check the video footage and compare the numbers shown on each screen and calculate the time difference. I repeat this 20 times and average the results and I get 23 milliseconds. That is my baseline latency with direct HDMI cable connection. Then I repeat the same process but this time instead of directly connecting the laptop to the external monitor, I add the Cosmos C1 in between so the video signal display on the external monitor is received through the Cosmos C1. And this time the average latency from 20 measurements is approximately 95 milliseconds. So what it means is the Cosmos C1 introduced approximately 72 millisecond latency. This is not the most accurate way to measure latency because of the monitor's update interval is not super high, but that should give you some rough idea about what you can expect especially when you are using a HDMI connection. I also tested the Mars 400S Pro using the same method. The factory latency figure for the Mars 400S Pro is 0.1 second or 100 millisecond, which is quite a bit slower than the Cosmos C1, which is as low as 40 millisecond. But the latency number that I got for the Mars 400S Pro using my test was actually very similar to the Cosmos C1 and it's only a few milliseconds slower. A new feature for the Cosmos C1 is that it has the built-in UVC which means USB video device class. So that means you can just connect the Cosmos C1 receiver directly to your computer and use it as a webcam or video source for your computer's live streaming or video call software. I saw there are some earlier reviews saying this feature didn't work for them, but when I test it, it works fine for me. I test it on a Windows computer and I use the Cosmos C1 with the firmware 1031 as a webcam for Zoom and also a few other video call software and also live streaming software and it works perfectly fine for me. The setup is pretty straightforward, basically just make sure you are transmitting video to the receiver and then 
it's just plug and play just plugging the usb cable connecting the receiver and the computer and that just work holyland did mention it only supports 1080p 60 so if you find it doesn't work for you just make sure the transmitted video is in the correct format the latency when using the uvc feature also appears to be quite decent this is small latency but pretty acceptable for a web video call or live streaming the retail price of the Cosmos C1 is around 900 US dollar, so it's not exactly a cheap video transmitter. But after using it for about a month now, I feel the price of it is pretty reasonable. Compared it to the already excellent Mars 400S Pro, I can see why a lot of professionals would choose to pay about $250 more and get the Cosmos C1 instead. The long 1000 feet or 300 meter transmission range, auto frequency hopping, means you can get reliable transmission even when you are shooting at challenging location. The more versatile input and output is also good when you work with a team and give you more flexibility in terms of how you want to set up your camera. The building UVC is definitely a very handy feature as well as you can do live streaming without having to buy any additional hardware. That nice carry case is definitely another great thing for professional users who need to shoot in different locations all the time. The latency also isn't bad. However, from my test results, the cheaper Mars 400S Pro appear to have very, very similar latency. I do miss the Hollyview app support that the Hollyland Mars series transmitters can use, but not this Cosmos C1. So as I said, I don't know whether there's any technical reasons why the Cosmos C1 can't support it. But if there isn't any technical reason, then I really want Hollyland to update the firmware to allow the Cosmos C1 to use the Hollyview app as well as it is really a very useful app. Now, if you are already using the Mars 400S Pro or even 300 Pro or some other very similar video transmitters, then I'm not too sure whether I would recommend you to upgrade to the Cosmos C1 because it is quite a bit of money and the latest Mars series transmitters I feel is really good enough for most kind of usage. But if you are a professional filmmaker and looking at buying a new wireless video transmitter, you want good range, good reliability, and you may want to do some live streaming as well, then the Cosmos C1 is surely something you should consider.